All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar, Cloud Services and Retail, the Top 5 Things You Need to Know. Uh, my name's Adam, and I'll be the moderator for today's call. Uh, before we get started, I uh, just wanted to review, review a couple housekeeping items to make sure you get the most out of our session today. Uh, if you take a look at the bottom of your audience console, uh, you'll see several application widgets that you can use during today's session. Uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, you can use the Q&A widget. We'll answer questions during the last five minutes, and we'll do our best to answer all questions during today's session. Uh, if there's any questions that we're not able to get to, uh, we'll make sure to follow up with you through email after the webinar. Uh, some additional resources are available in the resource list widget that looks like a folder at the bottom of your screen. If you have any technical issues, please click on the help widget. It has a question mark icon and it covers common technical issues. An on-demand version of the webinar will be available tomorrow, and it can be accessed using the same link that you used to join us today. If you're viewing this webinar on demand, you can still submit your questions in the Q&A box, and we'll get back to you through email. And uh, all right, now that that's out of the way, I'd like to introduce you to our speakers for today. Um, from Access Communications, we have Hedgie Bartol, Segment Development Manager for Retail in the United States, and Rick Snook, Business Development Manager for Retail and Banking in Canada. And then from Genetech, we have Marc-Andre Bergeron, Sales Director of Canada. All right, so now I'd like to turn things over to you, Rick, to get started. Rick, over to you. Thanks a bunch, Adam, and welcome everybody, and thank you for joining us in this quick 30-minute webinar. We've outlined an agenda, and what we'd like to cover today is an overview of the cloud and how it affects IT and LP and how we got here. But more importantly, really what it's about is raising awareness, providing tips, and raising questions for you and your teams that you can come back and have a consultation with, a discussion with, and we can start to open up those broad ideas. But most importantly, we want to make sure that we answer your questions. Either if we run out of time today, we'll answer those questions by emailing you back, or otherwise we'll try to get to your questions today. But it's really important to think about the past year, and I'm going to pass it over to Hedgie to talk about you know, the challenges of 2020 and the impacts going forward. And Hedgie, why the cloud? <laughs> well, that's a great question, Rick. I'm glad you asked. Uh, so I would say the 2020 certainly was a challenging year in many ways, um, but it also allowed the retail loss prevention space the opportunity to essentially rise up and be the leaders that they have always been. Uh, by their nature, loss prevention is a problem solver, and uh, that's what they brought to the market through the, uh, through the tough times we've had. So there was a movie a while back, a young couple lost some, some data and uh, they made the comment when they were upset about losing this this footage, um, you know, well, where is it? Well, it went to the cloud. Well, where's the cloud? And the comment was made, nobody knows where the cloud is. And so what we want to do today is we kind of want to help you understand where the cloud is, what the cloud is, and why you might want to investigate the cloud, or more specifically, hosted video as we're talking about. So if you think about it, really, many systems and services that we use in retail are migrating towards a cloud. Um, every every day, more and more systems are, are becoming cloud enabled and Mark andre will get to what exactly that is in a minute. But what this does, this allows for much greater scalability and more importantly, flexibility within your tools and your systems and your services. Your workforce is now remote and due to current restrictions, the cloud can help streamline access to the systems from anywhere so long as the credentials are implemented and the people are authorized to access the systems that they're authorized, that they're accessing. And utilizing the cloud can also help you internally with removing silos between business units. And due to the ease of sharing access to your systems with other business units within your organization that are authorized, you can start to share that data, that information, and that visualization of your stores. But think of the benefits of being able to integrate your video and your surveillance to other cloud services, such as case management or exception-based reporting. What would that mean if you could start to bring them together because they're on the common platform of the cloud? And the reality is we've been using cloud-based services for many years and we may not have realized it. Think of online banking, maybe your online email services such as Yahoo, Gmail, things like that. Uh, social media, that is certainly a cloud-based service that uh, I certainly know my daughters access on a regular basis. So that's just sort of a, a little bit about why you might want to migrate towards the cloud as an LP professional. And I'll turn it over to Mark Andre to start to uh, set the stage for you. 
Thanks, Edgy. Um, I think we need to first manage expectations here, right? Uh, so retail environments will actually go through phases. So they'll really start um, a move to the cloud uh, directly, right? Most of the stores have been in operations for a long time. Uh, so what we've noticed on the market can actually be defined into four, four different phases. And I'll go through those phases in this slide. So phase one is, well, we need security, right? So it's a simple need, simply met, deploy, record cameras, you know, an intrusion system, access control, very simple, right? Uh, not really thinking about the future. That's typically what we see as an in-store play, very simple, very cost-effective, not very cloud-friendly, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, it lacks features and lacks scalability. So now, now once you've, uh, you've, you've hit a wall after phase one, you're, you're growing, right? Um, so you're, you hit phase two. So you notice that you have security, but you have five different security systems and they're not connected together. Uh, you need new features, you need new functionality, you really can't get to it. So this is where uh, the need for security is growing. So access control being required, more advanced feature required. Again, this, will, this is when the, a, a unified platform or an integrated platform will come in and then we'll bring all of the information together. So again, typically an in-store play focuses on one system deployed at the store. However, when you're hitting phase three, so this is where you've got the unified platform. Now you, you're, you're trying to be more efficient uh, with it. You're trying to, you know, to make sense of the information you have, move forward. Um, so where phase one and two uh, work really good for one store, uh, so retail environment will hit a wall uh, in regards to geographical footprint at that point. So you're seeing a need for centralization, a need to share the information, you, need, you see a need to get operational value out of that security system, right? So it could be through automation, through workflows, SOPs, reports, but also sharing of the information. So it's typically at that phase that we're seeing a, an opening for the cloud. Uh, because we want to connect multiple stores, we need to standardize across a geographical region. We need a system that can easily be accessed, managed, and that can actually scale very easily. Now that brings us to phase four. So phase four is, We've unified all of our security systems together. We've centralized the information. Now we have a lot of data that's getting produced. So what do we do now? So we want to push the limit of the system. We want to start analyzing our retail data. We want to start getting intelligence from that security system. We want to start to, to feed other departments uh, data to align uh, you know, with uh, occupancy management, with POS transaction analysis, average basket size, conversion rate, queue detection, flow analysis, et cetera, right? This is where the, cl the cloud becomes a must, right? We not only want to connect multiple stores, but we need to compute, analyze, and present uh, that information uh, in a way that can be consumed uh, by all of the stakeholders that are, um, you know, working in those stores. Uh, this computing can be achieved in store, but the cost of compute and management is astronomical. And just the cost of amassing all of that data and presenting it in one location um, is not, uh, does not make very uh, much sense, right? Um, in the difficult, difficult situation we're facing currently, I mean, retail stores uh, that were leveraging the cloud were able to quickly adapt, uh, repurpose their current system, react faster, and be proactive as the situation evolves and continue to evolve on a daily basis. So I've talked about you know, that unified play, that connected store play, but what is that connected store? Well, this is our idea of what we see as, as a connected store, right? Uh, as you can see, and, and I won't go through uh, every one of those uh, captions, but the connected store goes over typical intrusion camera access control and intercom system, right? It includes retail analytics, RFID integration, inventory management, wireless access control, and also security analytics. So now you have other stakeholders and loss preventions that actually benefit from that system. So this is where access to that system is of the utmost importance. So operation and investigation is performed both locally at the security office, on mobile phones, at a centralized operation center that can oversee multiple stores. So this is, this is very important to allow that play to actually work. Remote operators such as loss prevention, marketing, senior management, health and safety uh, also needs access to that system, either from the local office, from the comfort of their own, their home office, or on the go, instead of driving by each store to get the information. Most store right now um, have a private cloud deploy deployed between each store. So the goal that um, that we're uh, bringing to, of what we're bringing to the market today is not to reinvent the wheel, but to leverage what's in place 
um, including portions that are managed by a public cloud provider, connect everything. So we've talked about public, we've talked about private. What is the difference between a public and private cloud? Um, it's actually quite simple. So, but first, let, let's let's set the stage. So I just want to add a little bit more uh, color to what Edgy mentioned about the cloud. So, in the, the cloud is basically a term that is used to describe a global network of servers that will store, manage data, run application, or deliver content or a service. Right. So we're like Edgy said, we're using cloud applications every day. It could be for meetings, file sharing. What we're doing right now is hosted on cloud, or to simply watch video. All that to say that the cloud is not really a physical entity, but is instead a vast network of servers um, deployed around the globe, which are connected together and meant to operate as a single ecosystem. So the information is available anywhere you go, anytime you need it. So in simple terms, servers and software are moved to a managed location with managed services that are guaranteed to be operational 99.9% .9 of the time. So this is what it means. So as mentioned before, I said public cloud, private cloud, and I'll throw a third one in with hybrid cloud, right? So what is a public cloud? So public clouds are owned and operated by a third party cloud service provider. Those are the Microsoft Azure or the AWS of the world. So what they deliver is computing resources like server storage over the internet. So with a public cloud, all hardware, software, and supporting infrastructure is owned and managed by the cloud provider. The management of the security applications, such as update patches, hotfixes, are also performed by the manufacturer of the software because you're consuming as a service. When you're talking about a private cloud, so that a private cloud refers to cloud computing resources that are used exclusively by a single business or organization, and that is housed in on-site data center that are owned by the company. Um, a private cloud is one in which the service and infrastructure are maintained on the uh, private network, and management of the security application of the security infrastructure would typically be performed by in-house IT with the associated service agreement. That brings us to hybrid cloud, right? Not every situation is the same. So hybrid cloud will combine public and private cloud bound together by technology that allows data and application to be shared between them. So the size and complexity of the environment will actually dictate the type of approach. So in retail, what we've seen uh, most is public and private being leveraged um, in a hybrid in a hybrid fashion. So cloud computing actually brings in a lot of technical advantages. So we could go uh, with speed, right? Because it provides uh, it is provided as a self-service and on demand. It is scalable. It will deliver the right amount of resources when needed, where needed. Uh, we could talk about productivity because it removes the need for tasks such as hardware setup, software patching, other time consuming IT management chores, uh, or performance. You know, public cloud provider will always update their hardware such that performance never becomes an issue. But as a security professional, why, why should I care about the cloud? Well, there's three big items here. So the first one is cost. So with cloud, you actually eliminate the capital expense of buying the hardware and the software and running on-site data centers, which are becoming more and more expensive because it includes the cost of service, electricity, power, cooling, plus the IT experts that are there to manage the infrastructure. We could also bring reliability to the table. So what, if, what about disaster recovery, business continuity in case of major failure? So with the cloud, it's actually quite easy and less expensive uh, because the data is disconnected from local sites and is mirrored at multiple redundant sites. And what about security? Well, security is very important. Cloud provider offer a broad set of policies, technologies, and controls that will strengthen cybersecurity overall. This will help protect the data, the application, and the infrastructure from potential threat. So again, <laughs> what does that mean for security for loss prevention? It actually means the possibility to have a centralized, secure, fail-proof security system that is consumed when needed for what is needed, no more, no less. So today, loss prevention is asked to do more with less people and less budget which drives the need for centralization. IT is being asked to manage a security portfolio and have been consuming cloud services for a long time. So the synergy between the two groups uh, is growing, which makes a push towards the cloud uh, very much a possibility. Excellent, and I think we could be done here. I think uh, Mark andre covered it all. That was fantastic. Uh, so some other things to think about when it comes to you know, the benefits of, of the cloud, the uh, benefits of hosted video, is being able to uh, reduce your overall hardware footprint, which of course, let's face it, everything we're talking about points to a reduced cost. 
So by standardizing on your hardware, you know, you're going to have a much lower capital cost. You'll be able to leverage your economy of scale. Uh, you'll be able to leverage your buying power. And you'll also be able to reduce the amount of uh, uh, of support and maintenance issues because you'll have maybe a fewer number of uh, the spare hardware, hardware components on site or in store. Uh, reducing that hardware also reduces the footprint of that hardware in your store. So let's face it, expensive. And uh, whenever you can reduce the, the footprint in your locations for equipment and things that are not sales sellable items, uh, the better off your, your numbers are going to be. And it also reduces the complexity for IT. You're reducing the amount of systems, the cost of trainings, and knowledge into and, and putting all your knowledge into one system, reducing the overall need for support. And think about the ability to be able to centralize your training as well as your support. The price of labor is higher than it has ever has been, and you're constantly, as a retail asset protection professional, being tasked to do more with less. Uh, so by being able to centralize that training, not have to bring people in-house or on-site to do so, uh, will dramatically increase your profitability as well as reduce the overall headaches and cost of operation. And it's also going to make it uh, so that you have fewer points of failure. When you're leveraging the cloud, you don't have all the servers on site, you don't have all the equipment and all the other devices, and you'll also be able to uh, easily identify and report when there is an issue because the cloud gives you that over, overarching, all-seeing view into your system, and you'll be able to quickly respond to the issues. So how does this make your job easier? In other words, as we've said a couple times, what's in it for LP? Think about the fact that uh, you may or may not have in-house experts in your store, one expert per store, doing your audits and reports and working on your systems. And you, you have to lean sometimes on your store associates and store managers to do so. So when you have the cloud, you now have the ability to send the expert to the store without actually being present in the store to perform all these tasks and your audits and so forth. And it gives you that, that expert doing the job you need done the way you need it done. And it really allows you to, once again, do more with less. So it raises the question to everybody, would you let a plumber change your tires? Maybe your plumbers do change your tires. I don't really know. But why do I raise this point? Well, I raise it because when we look at the system resources today, IT owns the network, LP owns the devices. And although those silos are breaking down more and more every day because there's a cross relationship between the two, more than ever before, we need an alignment, a collaboration, and an improved cyber health security environment. What 2020 demonstrated to all of us is the need for quick, diverse solutions to be delivered in order to meet the changing market. Realizing how much video systems could do raised awareness for the demand of future deliveries of benefits to the business. And if you think about your own operations where marketing, operations, health and safety, real estate and HR all needed exclusive views to the system for varying reasons throughout the past year. And you'll know more than ever that many challenges were brought forward. How are we gonna deal with occupancy? How are we gonna do with the number of people? How are we gonna do with the daily cleaning? How are we gonna do our security bag audits? How are we gonna do all the things that we need to do to make sure the store is ready for reopening if it went through lockdown? Well, remote video was the case, but how many people went out there and said, wow, of my 100 locations, I can get a clear picture on 25 and 75 I forgot to test and now I can't see them. The cloud really creates that collaboration for there. So therefore alignment of resources to is the need to reach the future being necessary. Alignment of resources of IT, LP, and your privacy group, because now you're asking to move the data outside your premise and into the cloud. And we wanna make sure that all of that is secure. We wanna collaborate with everybody involved to see what their needs of the system are to make sure that whatever service we're going to use for that, it's there. And then answering the concerns of the cybersecurity department, right? Privacy, limiting access for the future needs of the business. But the one most important thing that you need to take away on this point, begin to break down the silos. This is the time. This is where you've got the seat at the table. Everybody knows what you can bring to the table and start to have those discussions towards the future goals of the business and what you can use from the past year to prepare yourselves for a better future. Edgy? 
Back to you. Thank you, Rick. Absolutely. And you bring up a good point uh, in regards to what we've all been experiencing over the past year. Uh, I think we all were hit with the scenario that we may not have been expecting. And we found ourselves in a position of having to change our business, change the way we do business, change the way we meet our customers' needs. And we had to change without being able to necessarily uh, go on site and make those changes. So imagine if you had had the ability to deploy um, various technologies that became prevalent during the, uh, the pandemic, such as occupancy management or mask detection or uh, the knowledge of when more people are in your stores uh, or less people for sanitation purposes and social distancing and things like that. If you had been able to, to work through the cloud, if you'd had a cloud infrastructure in place, you would have been able to deploy these artificial intelligence and these analytics and these other solutions uh, on the fly as you go. And as Mark andre uh, mentioned, you pay on a consumption basis. So you have the ability for, you know, today, remote access, health and safety, organized retail crime. But think about for tomorrow, how you're going to scale if we have another situation where our business has to dramatically change like it did in the past year. Um, again, you've got that scalability. You've got that flexibility. You don't have to buy it all in advance either. You don't have to say, okay, I got to build the roadmap for the roads that haven't been built yet you'll be able to unlock and deploy these things as you go because essentially they're residing in the cloud waiting for you to consume them. Uh, and they can you know, be deployed on the go based on the opening and the closing of your stores. And you know, as things happen so quickly, uh, rolling out new technology is gonna be easier to install something in the store without actually being present. And again, this hits your OPEX as opposed to your CAPEX. So you can then start to, to look at other solutions as a service, such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning. You're putting in that infrastructure and that platform and that foundation in order to be able to embark upon it when your business needs require. Mark Andre? Thank you, Edgy. Um, we can make this, uh, this slide very, very simple. So when we're talking about cost reduction, uh, it, it, it's actually quite simple. So. On top of direct savings on capital costs, no servers on locations means less risk. No management of the software on location also means less risk. And what, what, what less risk means? It actually means direct savings to both loss prevention and IT, right? Diverging the cloud allows the level of flexibility required to address unforeseen situations as well. Features can be added when required. Locations can be closed if the need arise, can be open if the need arise. Temporary locations can be addressed uh, fairly easily. Uh, less capital expenditure means more money is available to focus on current operation um, as well. Uh, while the cost of on-premise hardware and maintenance is raising, the cost to access the cloud is lowering due to extended usage. Um, as well, when we're, when we're saying no servers on location means less maintenance, no software on location means less maintenance. Less maintenance means, le means uh, more savings, right? So less staff that provide direct savings as well. So next we have a uh, quick poll. Um, so it would be great if you could take the, the time to put your thoughts. Great, thanks Mark andre So um, everybody, the poll's up in front of you and we're gonna show you the results. But in the meantime, Adam, we're gonna take a couple of, um, of the Q&A questions while we're doing that and before I reveal the results of the cloud. So I'm gonna leave this slide up so they can answer but maybe you can direct the questions and uh, and one of us will take them to answer. Yeah, 100%, thank you, Rick. All right, so like Rick said, let's open it up for a QA. and a um, If you have any questions, please go ahead and enter them into the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen. Uh, I'll give you guys a moment uh, just to give you some time to answer, ask some questions. couple coming through here. All right, so I've seen a couple have come through. Uh, so let's start out with this one. So one person says, analytics and data analysis are hot topics. Uh, what are the advantages of utilizing them with the cloud? And I'll open that up to the team. So I'll I'll take that I'll, one. I'll start quickly. out with that one. Go ahead. Go ahead, Edge. 
<laughs> we can both do it. Uh, you know, we tell people all the time that Rick and I share a brain between us. But uh, essentially, the uh, you know, uh, to utilizing the cloud with, when it comes to analytics is that you have the ability to sort of a la carte, right? You may or may not need all the various analytics available in the marketplace at all your stores on all your cameras. And it allows you the ability to essentially pick and choose, right? And use them where you need them, when you need them. And as we mentioned before, when you have a situation like we were faced with in 2020, you have the ability to do so without necessarily having to go on site and work through all the configurations and, and refocusing and things like that. That's my view in a nutshell. I'll turn it over to Rick for his summary. Yeah, I, I agree, Edgy. One of the biggest challenges we saw with everything was the ability to you know, make sure that, how do we deploy, for example, occupancy? And when we started to tell retailers, well, we'll put two devices in every store, and they calculated that times 500 stores, and it all became, we'll be ready for the complete deployment in one year. They really frowned upon that. So one of the huge advantages is to be able to do those analysis quickly, respond to the business needs, and then create a business continuity case out of it to support whatever could occur. So just part of the plan. Adam? Yeah, sweet, thank you guys. All right, we got another question. Um, what can you say about cybersecurity with cloud when there are always concerns from end users about migrating over to it? So I'll take that one. Um, so the, the way to engage end users and, and, and opening them up to, uh, to the cloud is, is to bring the right partner to the table, right? I mean, um, you need to have a partner that, that, knows, um, that knows about cloud, that knows about security, that knows about networking. Um, so it, it's all around who you bring to the table with yourself to meet with an end user. Um, so you need to align with, with the right companies that, that understand cybersecurity and that can actually speak I will say speak IT with, uh, with with the stakeholders from the IT department. Yeah, and I, I just add to that, Mark Andre, how many times have we seen those 30 page documents, right, that IT gives us to talk about cybersecurity? And if you are not in the know, where do you get those answers, right? And so it is all about the partnerships and it, it goes back to, you know, would you have the plumber change your tires? Well. You're not going to have somebody who's not comfortable with the IT network being in that discussion room. And so alignment is huge and, and that's why we're really here to help um, and we're here to answer those. Adam, we got time for awesome. Thank maybe you, one or two more. Got one or two more? All right. So another one we got is, is cloud a practical solution for technologies other than just video, like access control or audio? Actually quite interesting, uh, this one, because we're seeing more momentum right now uh, in the retail industry for um, access control as a service. Um, so video as a service has been around, uh, will continue to be around, but it's always limited by, uh, by the bandwidth that's available. Um, however, access control as a service uh, really removes, reduces the complexity of the system and allows that centralized model uh, with little to no need for bandwidth. So we are seeing uh, a lot of momentum in that regards. Um, as far as audio as a service or um, uh, intercom as a service, uh, this is something that we've seen uh, a lot of demand for. Um, although I would say that it's fairly new on the market, I'd say about six months, but there is, uh, there is a need for it and we're, seeing, we're starting to see momentum. Uh, so the expectation is uh, by the end of the year, we're gonna start seeing fully unified video access control and audio uh, systems being managed 100% in the cloud. Great, so I'm gonna stop it there, Adam, because I wanna be able to get through the poll results and anybody's question who we missed, um, we'll come back and return that uh, after the webinar. But so interesting set of results we have here. So 37.5% of respondents said, yes, absolutely. Um, 12, it's great to see 12 and a half saying we're already there, which I, I think is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and the other results, um, I think that's interesting. 37.5%, I'm not 100% sure. And you know, you can reach out to us and, and have that discussion. So these are good results and, and we really appreciate it. So really what's next in the plateau in the next 20 seconds that we have? Well, reach out, let's have a discussion. Let's have a coffee time. Let's have a virtual meeting, whatever you want to do and evaluate your existing system. Let's understand what your options are. 
What are the ways to navigate to the cloud that's going to make it comfortable for you and your company? And then we put some resources in the resource guide area. Um, there's an access cybersecurity ebook. There is an access and Genetech networking encryption book, which speaks to that cybersecurity question we, we talked about. There's a hardening guide, which talks about hardening your system and not leaving it default. And Genetech, the security of security is also included. So good documentation that you can work by. Um, and Mark Andre, it looks like we lost Hedgy, which I suspected we would with the storms that are going on. Um, so um, anyway, on behalf of Hedgy, uh, Mark Andre, our contacts are here on screen. We'll follow up with an email to everybody. Um, we're 39 seconds over, but I really want to thank everybody for your 30 minutes today. We hope you got some value and we look forward to hearing from you. Any last words, Mark Andre? I'd like to thank everybody for their time and uh, we'll reach out uh, individually after this webinar. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.